Hello and welcome aboard to Railroader. In um, this video, um, this is really my first video with Railroader. I'm going to be uh, going over um, how you could get the rail driver working with the locomotives and railroader. That's if you so choose to. And if you have the rail driver or have thought about getting the rail driver um, to use with a uh, train sim of your choice. And um, I did bring it up in the uh, Steam forums with uh, the developer, developers I should say, and they did reply back and, you know, would take it into consideration and look into it. And for me that's good enough. Um, hopefully they will um, make full use of the real driver. Um, I'm not one to give up too quickly and too easily. And uh, anyway, um, let me bring up the MacroWorks 3.1 program. So I did get the rail driver working with a uh, railroader, and surprisingly, it was pretty easy. Um, one thing you do have to do is, and I did realize only by accident that once you have this set up, you don't have to leave it open while the game is running, you can minimize it. And I think it'll still work even if after you close it. There are some like Railroader and a few others, I'm not gonna do name dropping, that do not support it natively. But you can get it to work to an extent, um, but that excludes the, the reverser, the throttle, and any train that has a, a dynamic brake or uh, some of the, uh, the electric trains that are a uh, combination brake throttle, the train brake or automatic brake, the independent brake, the lights, and the windshield wipers, the trains that have windshield wipers. These cannot be changed through the macro works program as i understand it it is hard coded what that actually means i don't completely know because i'm not a programmer uh i don't know a lick of code i mean i maybe i know a little bit here and there when it comes to you know fiddling with uh engine ini settings or or game ini settings but other than that, um, I've never coded, never was interested in doing so, but this program makes it pretty simple once you know how to do it. Um, and I just like, sometimes I just dive in and if I break it, I uh, basically start all over again. So you really should set it up for the game that you want to control, train sim that is. And you can use this for other other games as well, as I've seen. If you're a programmer and you're a coder, great, have at it. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, this is my suggestion. You can do it however you want. If you want to do this, it's up to you. I'm just showing how it can be done. And for me, it's a lot easier. And the MacroWorks program does see and recognize Railroader. I was surprised that it did. So the ones that you see with a blue check mark are already mapped. That's one, two, three, four. That's the two rockers you see here. And then the alerter button, which is in conjunction with the whistle. The P is for the, um, the Fusi. And obviously the bell. Okay, so that's four, six, seven, and then um, these two here, button zero zero one, is for the headlight. 
uh, button 015 is for the uh, cylinder to uh, uh, blow out some steam and get the accumulated water out. Um, button 002 and button 016 is for the reverser. And button 03 and 017 is for the throttle. Um, I forgot, what was button 018? Oh, that's for the shifty. Yeah, you, you, you want to you get shifty? There you go. Um, and, okay, it is working. Okay, there we go. Oh, I just realized, what did it do to do? The only hot element I have is in the top right corner. Okay, so it is working. So shift P removes your HUD so you can take screenshots. Um, and then shift T is for your uh, equipment. Um, I mapped the map, you see, dad joke, to the rocker up here. And the lower one was for the switch list. Um, I haven't been really into the uh, railroader game, been busy with other things, and it's a shared computer, so I still have to learn what the sh sh switch list is for, um, but I have a map there, and then this one is for your, you see, Ducktown and Juniper Railway, um, for your railroad, your locations, finance, your crew, your employees, your settings, and uh, that's that. So close that out. You can bring it back up uh, with this here. And we'll close it out. I don't believe I did any other ones yet. Um, so as far as... um. The train, you still have to select your train. Nothing works. No bells, no horns. Nothing works unless you select your train. And it's the same thing with the rail driver. So the way it works when you want to program map a key binding to the macro works program to work with the rail driver, again, you cannot do any any of the, the 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 controls I had mentioned earlier. The horn or whistle, uh, bell, these uh, controls here, and the blue buttons across here, uh, the rocker and the D-pad. D-pad I had set to the Wasad keys, but um, it didn't make any much of a difference. It still moves pretty quickly. Um, it's nice that they added uh, custom key combinations that you could do yourself if you want, if you don't you know, like the way it was set up from the factory. Um, but for me, uh, outside of the Wasad keys and a couple of controls like control click on the locomotive, I don't want to do that just yet. You still have to use the keyboard and the mouse and I'm just trying to get as much onto the rail driver. This way I could, could do most of it right from the rail driver and only use the keyboard when necessary. And like I said, hopefully in time as the game develops, the developers will incorporate the rail driver with native support. Um, this is something I'm going to go into again later on. Hopefully this is not too long of a video. I'm going to try not to make it that long. I know I can I can ramble on the the glad hand the cup, couplers and the angle valves. I'm gonna go over and because that has been changed a little bit because with the latest update to the game. As far as um programming the the key bindings, okay. I know I'm doing all, everything, but uh, see what there was a couple other key bindings I wanted to change to the to the uh, to the rail driver. So. With this open, 
Let's uh, bring this back up. Okay, so okay, let's let's let me do uh, I control I. So to program it, okay, you gotta double click the button you wanna you wanna map program, okay, and you have to make sure that it's automatic separation of up and down strokes. This will move the last upstroke to the release macro. I do not understand what that completely means. Um, I just know that this box needs to be ticked. Make sure that this box here is selected on top. And that is Control-I. So, Control-I. Save. And there's a the blue check mark. So that's uh, two, four, six, and uh, number seven. So that's one, two, three, four, five, see, two, four, six, seven. No, we don't want that. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. All right, let's see. Is that Maybe I didn't take. Um, Control I. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Let's try the other Control I. We'll remove it. And if you want to remove any any key binding that you've recorded with the key presses here, you need to delete them first. Hit save, then go back, double click, and we'll use. Control I here. Okay, and that might not take, but we'll try it anyway. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's not taken. So let's try one more time. This can be a little bit tricky because when I was uh, contr uh, mapping uh, Control P, it wouldn't work with Control P on the right side of the keyboard, but Control P on the left side of the keyboard, it worked. So let's delete that. Delete that. Hit save. Ooh, double click. All right. So Control. Hmm. I have a feeling that's not going to work, so let me try it one more time. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. I mean, it, this is finicky, and not all commands from the keyboard will translate over to the real driver, so... Okay, let's see what happens. That button does seem a little weird. It makes a makes a clicking noise when I press on it. So let me try a different button. I might have to bypass that one. So I'll take the bottom one, button zero zero one nine. Okay. No, won't take. So let's try the other one. Like I said the last time I tried this, uh, I don't know why, but sometimes the the left and right control and alt um, are independent for some reason. So we'll do. Mm, I don't think that's going to work. Something just doesn't feel right. Nope, not going to work. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. I won't leave it there because it'll it'll just clutter up the the list of macros, as I understand it. Um, there's a macro list here. 
and uh, that's everything that I've already mapped on the keyboard, and I don't want to leave anything there that doesn't work uh, to clutter that up. So, um, let's see, what else uh, can we get mapped there? Mm. Oh, that's what I never, I, I didn't uh, program. Q and E for leaning, that's right. I, I wanted to do that, and I and I ran into some problems with the, uh, with the OBS uh, program, and, um, and everything just got, got ruined. So, um, yeah, okay. So, we're going to leave that as is. So, um, button 005 will be for E, for leaning to the right. Save that. And Q for leaning left, and we'll save that. And there we go. So now we're going to select our train. Control click, select, and you could leave this open or you can close it. It's up to you. If you ever want to get back to that window, just um, click on here the name of your, whatever name you gave your train is going to show up there above the the controls uh, HUD and this box will come back up. So now that the train is selected and it still works here as well as the bell. Now the first time I did that, it didn't work. I had to sit there and hold the bell button. But something happened, and I don't know if it's because um, I set it up, okay, and I set it up globally, okay. Didn't mean to. It was just I wasn't paying attention, and I selected it. Um, you see the blue check mark. That's global settings. I haven't removed them, just leaving them there. But um, all the blue check marks are for railroader, and they all work. Um, so let's get back into the locomotive. And there we go. We lean right and lean back again. We'll press on the wrong buttons. And lean left. So if you hold it, it'll pop. It'll just hold it and let go. Same thing here. Hold and let go. Or press and you stay there. So that's working. Let's go back out. Okay. Um, the reverser. Uh... That's forward, reverse, forward, and the brake for independent, and the train brake, fully on, fully off, and you'll see the, the little hash marks turn um, not thread, and you hear the compressor, the, the pump running to fill up the, um, the brake pipe. So I'm going to put the brake back on. Okay, and the throttle. Okay, and um, like I said, you could do um, the bell. Now, um, the one thing that was, that one of the things that prompted me to do this is when you use H for the horn and shift, if you, if you press uh, the uh, one key too many times too quickly, you get the, the sticky key 
pop up through Windows. And uh, you they're kind of irritating um, because it, then it won't let you blow the whistle on the horn anymore. Uh, yes, it won't let you blow the whistle on the horn anymore. Okay. <laughs> uh, when that sticky key warning pops up, you can no longer blow the whistle or the horn um, on whatever train you have. So you can hold V and move your mouse. But I chose to do it this way. It's a lot easier for me. So I press the alerter and the horn toggle. So that works. And if I need to put a Fuji down, oh, wrong keys. Um, Too close to the switch, okay. Uh, let's try over here. Okay. Now, I gotta get a little bit closer here. Too far away to extinguish it. There we go. So the Fuji works. Um, my uh, locomotive got a little bugged out, so when you uh, want to blow out your. Uh, Excess water from the um, from the cylinders. That's working with uh, with the key. Uh, yeah, with the key with the rail driver. Um, like I said, that's for the reverser. And um, there's your lights. Okay, that one is your. That's, yep, it turned on the rear light. Okay. Press it again, low beam, off in the back, and off in the front, and then press it again, low beam, high beam. So that's working with the rail driver, and it still works with the, um, the keyboard as well. So everything that... Um, that you could do on a keyboard I got on here. So it's between two, four, six, eight, and then these here and the horn. And for me, it's a lot easier because of the way things are spread out on a keyboard. It's just the way you have to do it. There's not a lot of options uh, with the keyboard. Uh, trying to keep everything, you know, clustered in one little area. That's, that's, very difficult. You're, you're going to need uh, octopus arms to to push multiple keys, and um, this is why I chose to use the rail driver. Um, it's just one button. It just makes it easy for me. There's an, uh, a benefit for me, uh, and to anyone that may want to use the rail driver in this capacity with the game Railroader. Uh, it, again, hopefully, you know, it, it is my hope that in time as the game develops, uh, they do make it, uh, natively supported. Uh, you're not going to do away with the keyboard completely. Even if you have 100% real driver support, meaning the reverser, the throttle, train brake, independent brake, and your lights. And if any other locomotives are added to the game, and they have windshield wipers. Now, you can you could take all the key bindings you want here and put them right onto here, and then you can make a legend. And you can do that through the uh, program, uh, Macroworks. Click on the tab Legend, and so you get to the bell. Brings up this box here. And... You can make a legend, you color code it, and 
uh, print it out when you're done, um, change the font. Um, look at that, 13 millimeter by 13 millimeter. I couldn't, I couldn't have planned that. <laughs> um, so you could set up your own key bindings and everything onto the rail driver, make a legend, and print it out. I'm just going to take the paper that's already here underneath this black portion of the rail driver does come off so you could change out the it's a heavy duty cardstock uh type paper um that came with the rail driver and I have a couple that are plain old just plain white nothing written on them I probably use that and write everything in there real small probably have to get my daughter to do it because she can write smaller than I can and make the legend for the buttons that are already mapped to to the rail driver as well as the um the uh, keyboard so I, mean, I could do it this way but um i don't need i don't want to have a couple dozen sheets of paper but that's pretty much it i mean and you can minimize this and um you know what i'm going to try this real quick before I end the video on this, close that out, X out. So once you have it programmed and you have the train selected with control click, uh, you don't need the rail driver uh, macro works um, program running behind the game. I thought you had to have it that way, but you don't. Once you have it set, and you've selected, again, you could pro set that up with multiple train sims that do not use the rail driver for native support. And um, you want to move some stuff off the keyboard and use just a rail driver. Um, so there you go. That's pretty much how I figured it out. It just, like I said, I, I kept henpecking, so to speak. It just kept, you know, going at it and got it got it figured out and um that's pretty much it uh if i repeat myself i apologize um so uh the one thing i did want to touch upon is the way things work with the uh glad hands um again you can see how how i'm just barely tapping the the keys on my bloody keyboard no, no, it's not bloody. It's just a brand. Um, and uh, um, come on, it's just a little too sensitive. Uh, that's something else I had brought up to the devs um, on the Steam forums, and hopefully in time. Like I said, you know, earlier, this is still in early to. Uh, early access is still in development, and they've already put out quite a few updates already, considering um, it's only been early access for about maybe three weeks, um, two weeks. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe two weeks. But anyway, um, so they've already put out quite a few updates, and hopefully they'll... Um, either add a control, uh, some, uh, a slider or a tick box or something to help make the, um, the mouse and keyboard a little bit less sensitive. So anyway, um, the way, it, the way it works for me, uh, the way I've noticed it now, maybe this is the way it's intended by developers or maybe it's different for everybody. I don't know. Um, but I, I, I hadn't saw, Several people mention it in in, a, in the uh, Steam discussion page. So I can click on the coupler and it'll open, but it'll leave the the angle valves open. It has to be shift click. Uh, one thing is nice that they add is that you click on the glad hand, but you hear that hiss and. That's basically all the air just escaped from the air pipe. You can click on the glad hand again, and it'll connect. Now, if you shift-click the glad hand, it closes the angle valve, and shift-click again, 
and it'll open the angle valve, and now you got the air pipe uh, filling up with air from the uh, compressor air pump uh, from the locomotive. Now, if you do the same thing with the um, with the coupler, you shift click, it'll open the coupler and close the angle valve. But oh, see, this is the update that I'm glad that they did because you you would have I would have had to just move the train forward a little bit to yank the glad hands apart. That's not the way it should work. At least I didn't think so. Um, so basically, just click on it. And there we go. But now clicking it again to reconnect it, not going to work. You got to, um, um, let's see, it's in forward. Okay, put it in reverse. Okay, and once, once the coupler is connected uh, securely, now you can click the glad hands, but it won't close the valve. So now if you shift click, it'll open up the valve. So you have brakes throughout the entire train. That's the way things are working. Um, and it's nice that they changed that. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Um, it just didn't look right driving off with the train, leaving the cars behind and yanking the glad hands apart. That, that, that's like, you know, no, no. So I'm glad they fixed that. Um, and it, it, you know, it actually makes sense and it looks better. Not that I've ever worked on a railroad, but it just, it looks better and it, it makes sense. Okay. Um, I know I've talked a lot. I'm going to end the video here and hopefully, uh, you found this useful, informative, helpful, and, um, if you did, by all means, let me know. If you see that I could have done something better, differently, um, let me know. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Smash the thumbs up, likes button. Um, subscribe and share, and um, y'all come back now, you hear? Bye-bye mm, for now.